<laughs> so welcome back for the live stream. We are on the second part of the of the talk tonight. And um, I'm happy to give my microphone to Mathieu for that. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, Thai Paris was born from a desire to offer different paths for type design education and to try to build a strong and diverse community around it. Uh, in that regard, I think Veronica is definitely an inspiration for us and I'm uh, very happy and honored to have her with us today. Thank you, Veronica. Uh, so, Veronica Burian is a type designer, of course. Uh, she's also a true European. She's from Prague, Czech Republic. She studied in Munich, in Germany. She worked as an industrial designer in Vienna, Austria, and in Milan, Italy. She graduated from the MA Typeface Design in Reading, UK. Uh, she's been in Boulder, USA for a while, and she now lives in Catalonia, Spain, if I'm correct. Yeah. Uh, in 2006, together with uh, Jose Scaglione, she co-founded Type Together, a uh, leading independent and cosmopolitan type foundry that specialize in high-quality text typeface. Uh, they designed Mayola, Abril, Carmina, Brie, Adil, and many other. Their collection is way too large for me to uh, mention them all. <laughs> um, they are now a core team of uh, seven people spread all across the world. Uh, Type Together is also a much larger galaxy of other designers with whom they collaborate on a regular basis. I believe at least four of them are in the room tonight, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe more, who knows. Uh, they've released many uh, typefaces from other designers, such as uh, Belly, Alverata, Capitolium 2, or Garalda. Um, type Together also play a strong and active role uh, in education, as Veronica is demonstrating by being here with us today. Uh, and last but not least, Veronica is a founding member of the Alphabet Network, which is here to support and promote the work of all women in type and typography. It is one of the most uh, important, exciting and interesting places to write about uh, and learn about type today. Uh, Please join me in welcoming Veronica Burian. Thank you very much. Okay, that's great. So, Mathieu, so I can skip about 10 slides, which is perfect, because I thought perhaps some of you won't know, so I'm just gonna, this is Czech Republic, where I'm originally from. I love type, as you know. I was in Reading, uh, where I met this guy, which is Jose, which was about 14 years ago. You see my hair changed a little bit, went a bit grayer. And we found the type together a few years back. And now we have quite a big team and also our kind of language and script support uh, increased. And here you see us a bit scratching heads in our, in our meetings. <laughs> So, but I, what I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, custom typography today, that it's not really just, uh, there, are, there are various ways of creating a custom, custom type or typography. It's not always about doing a whole new typeface from scratch. Uh, you can quite often start with an existing font or a logo. But, you know, be careful, not uh, just because you take a font does not mean it's a logo. I'm gonna go rather quickly because everybody will be tired and I don't wanna hold you up too much. Um, this is, um, so here the Pomera is the logo, which originally the designer, <coughs> they selected VAG rounded. But uh, there you go, this is VAG rounded and actually the logo is adjusted. So all to say that um, you can't just take a typeface, set the name of the company, 
and um, expect it to work as a coherent logotype. Then quite often, again, starting with a logo, we were approached by uh, Puerto Rico TV. That was their old um, logo, their existing logo. They were very keen on keeping kind of that sort of feel and also this sort of, you know, that round thing there. Um, so we thought, okay, at least, you know, we, we give it some structure, we give it some, some cleanness. And uh, we convinced them that actually they could do with a custom typeface developed out of these particular letters. And they liked it so much that in the end they decided to change the whole kind of um, uh, I corporate identity and now they're using just a, just a logo, just a typeface as their main logo. And um, you can give, because it was only one style, yeah? Uh, I think they did not have more budget for anything else. Um, but to give them a little bit more flexibility, you see the changes in some of the letters, yeah? So with a little trick, with just a few key characters, you can create a, diff a slightly different texture and feel. And this is how it looks. The funny shape, that's Puerto Rico. That was the um, decision of the main, main designer. But they still have this kind of round thing, but not with this weird sausage. Um, they, sorry. <laughs> They, um, I hope nobody from them is actually listening to this now. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I just realized. <laughs> um, the designer, uh, they also introduced um, this as a, as a kind of um, signage. Uh, these are just mock-ups, but uh, the idea was to use that there. And we also did a whole set of icons, because it's TV, right, so there's weather weather channel, you need a lot of icons. And actually, by, uh, by accident, the, the sans serif is one of our typefaces as well, Soleil by Wolfgang Homola. It was a nice, nice kind of fast project. Um, then there are quite often slightly bigger, more intensive uh, projects where the, the client kind of comes, um, they like an existing typeface, usually from, let's say, if they come to us, they, they like one of ours, but it does not quite fit. Yeah? And here, this is the old design of La Voz de Almeria in Spain. And obviously, they needed a redesign, right? So, um, Casas and Associates in Barcelona, they approached us and um, they were quite keen on using our Abril, the display, and here's the text. But they felt like it's too, too sweet or it doesn't have the kind of punch that the, um, the typeface, uh, sorry, the, the newspaper, the Almeria newspaper needed for their kind of audience. So what we said, and as well, budget, not great. Um, so what you can do is to create something from the existing typeface. And here, what happened was, actually I have some more details. So it's kind of, um, you see the, the difference, the display and the text, and you see that the Almeria one was really, we squashed it a bit more. Uh, there are a few more details, like you see that the, the serifs change to give it a bit more general punch. And uh, we liked it so much, and we had uh, we retained our copyrights that we made a whole big family out of it uh, with four different whiffs. And this is uh, how it looks. They also actually started to use uh, Adele Sons in combination, and you know, this is not our spacing of the titling. <laughs> Um, this, oh no, th oops, sorry, going back. <laughs> this is very, very tight. Um, but newspapers usually really like that. So you have to go with it. And here it is in use. 
However, the website, well, <laughs> uh, they kind of missed on updating that. And what do you think is the main, actually, uh, content here? <laughs> I mean, what's the story? What's the story of today? <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so really, uh, they should go and clean up. Um, also, sometimes we are asked to add either another script, or in this case, it's more of a language support. To in this case, it was Adele. The Langara College in Vancouver licensed Adele quite a few years back, and um, for that kind of communications and website and the like. But uh, Langara, so that's that's in Vancouver, you know, Canada, and it's it's original Musqueam or kind of uh, North Indian tribes area. So I'm going to play you a little, little clip because the Langara College, or actually generally um, Canada or uh, British Columbia, they are trying to reconnect with that part of the history, reconnect and also um, kind of improve, support the, the local culture. And that also means the, the language. There were only like about 15 years ago, there were only like 12 actual fluent speakers of the languages. Now it's about 300. It seems like very little, but it's quite, quite important for them. So here, this clip, if I can play. Muskegon First Nations is very, very honored and pleased to be joining Langara in this naming ceremony today. As Langara College is located on the traditional territory of the Muskegon First Nation, this event both acknowledges and reflects the respect and strength of the relationship between Langara College and the Muskegon people. This ceremony marks the first time a BC First Nations has given an Indigenous name to a public post-secondary institution. I am pleased to learn that the name Sanewa Leila Senela Leilem, yeah. That's the name <coughs> for uh, for for this part. And you see, they did not have Adele <laughs> uh, in that language, so they asked us um, to expand the, and we work. Um, together with the Musqueam band, which is uh, like kind of the local tribe, to, that was the first part to set the logo in Halkomelen, which is the language of these people. I mean, it's kind of um, a, connect, um, a group of languages, uh, which is part of the Salishan languages of this North Pacific um, West in in North America. And um, originally the Native American tribes, they, they used oral traditions uh, and symbols and even weave, we weaving patterns. So like uh, if you imagine the Scottish tartans, yeah, so something very similar. By the weaving pattern of those things they were they are wearing, those kind of coats, they could recognize each other from which tribe they are. Uh, rather than actual inscriptions. So this um, kind of system they're using is the um, NAPA, the North American Phonetic Alphabet. And it's a, it's a system of phonetic notation originally developed um, by European and American linguists and anthropologists to be able to represent their sounds. Uh, it was kind of uh, developed in about 1818. So um, we worked with them to expand Adele, and that's how it looks like. 
you see like a very, very different texture, right? Um, that was really interesting. Okay, the next two, and I'm doing really fast, that's great. Um, there are two projects I wanted to go perhaps a little bit more in depth. Um, one is a newspaper as well, Clarín, which is the biggest Argentinian newspaper. This is from 2007, um, where yeah, they're using Whitney, which is the, the main headline font. Generally a good, obviously, great font, whatever. Um, but for, for, for Spanish, Spanish has a lot of A's. And it just felt that really the, the A is too wide. It creates too an unpleasant texture overall. So, but, okay, they continued using, using that. This is in 2012, but they started using Adele more in the, um, in the kind of uh, football, you know, sporty area. And with time, though, Adele started to gain more space. So it was used as an kind of accent, so-called accent font in a newspaper for these kind of little bits and pieces here and there. And at some point they thought, okay, we need to change Whitney. We need to have a different um, headline font. So because they were using Adele, they thought, okay, let's try Adele Sans, which is the, the, this one here. But you see that the structure does not quite feel right. It's a bit too open, a bit too soft, a bit, you know. And also it was uh, kind of in planning to, to use it for the supplements inside the paper. So then they came back um, with Meta Serif. This was just like a, like a version, again, of a bit of a tryout. Um, and they really liked the, the feel of it, the kind of punch of it. So we thought, okay, no, no, we have to do something here. Um, also, if you, so this is Meta Serif down here. Yeah. Um, they were doing more experiments and they, they started to see quite a few problems. Like actually the, the open G creates a strange texture, a bit of, it had generally too much unevenness along the, along the X side. And Meta was actually way too close for comfort to Adele which um, already gained too much uh, presence in the, uh, in, the, in the newspaper. So they did not really, um, they could not really go back. So what we, what we agreed on that we will develop for them a new typeface, a new headline typeface that will work with, within the kind of um, Adele parameters, let's say. And um, so we did various, various ideas, and uh, after the first selection, we kind of ended up here in the middle, uh, aiming for quite a low contrast titling font. And um, in the end, uh, it, it was two styles. The, the regular, the kind of is more of a lighter headline, but here you see it in in conjunction with, with Adele, and you see that, sure, it's, it's its own, let's say, personality, but within the palette, within the typical palette, it works quite well. Um, and here you have the new and old comparison. So it wasn't just uh, the typeface, the headline face they changed, but obviously also the kind of some reorganization of the layout. And um, I would say it works quite well. Here's some examples. And here you have uh, together with the sans. Oh, that's sans. Here as well, the lighter version. Well, and because we really liked it and uh, they, uh, we kept the rights to develop it further, we thought, okay, let's make a font family out of this. 
we, we, we decided to develop a whole, whole uh, project. So on the left, you have um, the two stylists that we developed for them, and on the top, we created another master. And from here, we went and um, kind of expanded this further in, in styles, uh, added an italic, which probably is a bit more uh, playful and a bit more kind of curvy than an, an, a newspaper would allow, but I really like italics. Jose, he hates it, so it's perfect. I, I get to do all the italics, and I get to play around a little bit um, with different features. And at that same time, we were kind of developing, rede well, redesigning, actually not us, but um, we had um, a, an agency redesign our website and we thought, okay, so if not a foundry, who else will actually make a proper typeface for their website, like a custom typeface for their website for the text? So we thought, perfect, we'll um, create out of the more titling version of Portada a text uh, version for for text, really kind of small body text setting uh, on screen. And here you see a bit of the development at the bottom. You see the um, the proportions change. I was talking a lot today with the with the students that if they want um, something for for smaller sizes or for screen, you need more space. Yeah, you need to be quite generous. And also the contrast changes so that it would um, hold up on, on screen. And that's uh, how it is, how it kind of ended up to be. We have the four styles for the text and more of a kind of a tight link. And over the years, we have been talking a lot um, with various designers, uh, users of typefaces, and what came up over and over again is, I want icons. I need icons. So we thought, okay, let's give you icons. Um, and we have two different versions. Uh, the top one, the kind of more simple one, is for small size. Uh, I think below 18 pixels, something like that. And the one um, which is a bit more detailed is for above that. Okay, wake up. I'm already at the last one. I'm super fast. I don't know what's going on. Probably I'm hungry, so. <laughs> um, about two years ago, we were contracted by Twinkle, uh, which is a UK-based educational company that um, or a company that produces educational material for um, kids, for teachers, for parents who are interested, for various age groups, but more or less uh, from kind of early on, three, four, to 12. And as pretty much everybody in the UK, or probably not just UK, in the kind of educational sector, was using Sassoon Sons. Yeah? And because Sassoon Sense, that uh, I have later on a comparison, uh, was like the typeface for kids. But they, they also realized that they really needed a better kind of identity, a better distinguishedness. No? Um, where are the Americans here? Um, to distinguish their brand from, from other competitors, let's say. Also, they needed uh, a broader language support because they were expanding. Um, so not just England, but all of Europe. And with you know new media, apps, web, blah, 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 um, their licensing needs changed. And in the end, really, um, it was cheaper for them to have a custom font made than um, trying to get Sassoon Sans fixed. So, what happened was that we gave them um, a few options and we work with really only a few letters at the beginning. And we kind of moved from, let's say, restraint to something a bit more expressive, 
had a few very good uh, meetings and briefings with them and um, kind of stuck with these two at the beginning and started to develop those further, including a few Marapa cases. So here you have Sassoon at the bottom and Twinkle at the top. So the kind of the, the um, letter shape, the underlying letter shape or the structure sort of had to follow um, to some extent what was there already. You, you won't believe how conservative teachers are. Uh, it was really, really hard quite often to just um, press them a bit further and say, come on, we can do something more interesting that will still be acceptable. And they were like, ah, I don't know. So, okay. But, um, however, we, I think the, the shapes of, of Twinkle ended up being actually very personal enough, but um, kind of generally very lively. And also, of course, um, with children or, yeah, children who start to learn, you uh, need this ambiguation of letters. So the more you can help in that, the better. Um, meaning that um, they, they know pretty much right away, okay, this is an A, this is a Q, they won't mistake it for something else. So we enhanced these features. And um, sure, like, like I said, uh, the, the design did not happen in a vacuum. It was not our kind of fancy idea of how a um, font for, for children should look like, but we had a lot of feedback um, from the teachers and from Twinkle themselves. So certain things like the K, like this K, yeah. Um, we had another alternate version but the teachers were very, very keen on having this one. So, again, what we did a little bit is to um, create alternate characters that would um, um, be more in tune, no, differently. Children, even quite young children today, they're exposed to typography, right? They, they see typography everywhere, so for them it's not so unusual to see more of a typographic style of letters. Yeah. And since this typeface was to cater to um, this quite a big age group from about four, five to 12, we, we said that with some of these key letters, uh, alternates, we can create a different texture that will make the text, let's say, a bit more adult for, for the other kids. And um, we also created enough um, styles for them to work on a, on a typographical layout level. Yeah? So you can, um, they can prioritize messages, they can really create a hierarchy with these styles, which they could not before, because I think Sassoon had only just one or two, two styles. And um, we cover the whole kind of um, Latin A, so-called Latin A, North, Eastern, South, West, um, Europe. And that's how it looks. And this is how they're using it, so in these kind of situations. The word space that it's so big, that's deliberate. That's something they um, they were very keen on in this particular setting. Or like this. And then actually, um, they really liked it. So about a year ago, yeah, they came back and they said that they wanted, or they, they wanted to be able to set these kind of writing samples also in their font, in Twinkle. So this is connected writing, yeah, but very specific, okay? Nothing easy. So you have a looped, unlooped, no lead in, lead in. And then some of the letters had to be very, very specific, yeah? These in particular, there was no way we could say, uh, hang on, 
um, perhaps not a good idea. Um, but okay, they they really feared that the teachers would uh, would object way too much. So this is um, kind of how we started. So we needed to stay in tune with the writing conventions. Yeah? So we have this different E that connects really, really low, so it could connect with the rest. And also a bit more of a curvy V. Um, this was the basic connection scheme. So you can imagine, yeah, just imagine, all the connections, 26 <laughs> by 26. Um, and we had to have um, some exceptions built in especially for like the, um, uh, the O or the V. So depending on where they were connecting, were they connecting along the baseline? Were they connecting, so were they connecting here along the baseline to go up? Yeah, because what they really uh, wanted to happen was that it would feel like one stroke. Yeah? It might sound very easy, but it's actually quite hard to do if you don't know the combinations, uh, if you can't control exactly the, the sequence of letters. So, yeah, we had to create um, various exceptions for the E. You see that uh, it changes or going up. And I think this is just one part of the all the alternates because, of course, um, there are all the accented letters. You need to do that as well. But thanks to glyphs. <laughs> <laughs> and this is how it looks, pretty much. Oh yeah, which one was really, really difficult was the R. And, or here, yeah. It's this kind of funny sort of wave. But there was no way for, for us to do something else. We tried, we suggested, alternate, no way. Like, forget it. So it ended up, yeah, being <laughs> a bit funny. Merci. Are you going to grill me now like the other guys as well? I hope not. <laughs> Thank you, Veronica. That was a very uh, uh, interesting, in-depth look at your custom work that we rarely get to see, so very interesting. Uh, I also, while I'm on stage, want to give Veronica and all the international guests from Thai Paris past and future, a big shout out. They come from abroad, they spend the whole day teaching and reviewing the attendees' work, and then they're still up for a great presentation uh, every Tuesday night. So uh, I know it's been a long day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you guys have any questions? Your presentation was too clear. There's no, no stone left in turns. Uh, they're, they're just too tired. <laughs> uh, I have some questions, but um, um, at, uh, okay, that's gonna be hard to articulate, but I'll, I'll try. Uh, I think you demonstrate very well with how you approach custom type, how Typeface are not set in stone once they're released and they, they are more in a flexible space. And Adele was something at, uh, at when it was released, but it can become something else and new style, new language, new the, the DNA of the typeface can exist in a lot of uh, parameters. How do you, how do you make that uh, clear to your clients? I, 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 like, I'm very, I'm uh, very impressed at how, m how much people come to you and say we like your typeface, 
but we would like it a little bit different. I, I would think that a lot of people would say, huh, I like this typeface, but it's not right, so I'm gonna pick another one. How? I <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, we, we, try, we try to be uh, we try to be open um, and approachable. Sometimes um, it also happens that, yeah, they come, we don't have the right choice for them, so we help them perhaps to go somewhere else as well. <laughs> um, and we, I think one of our main, let's say, strengths is that we are quite flexible. Just through our structure, I'm not sure if it was clear, but we don't have a physical uh, studio. We don't have a studio with like type together big on there. We <laughs> have each of us is kind of either in a little studio somewhere else or at home or whatever. So we we kind of uh, learned to work very flexibly. Um, and I don't know, perhaps. Uh, our fonts are so convincing that they, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> to be honest, I, I'm not sure. But we, we really try to, um, um, if somebody comes, we, we try to make it happen. Yeah. yeah. We, yeah. More question? Yes. Uh, hi, thank you for your day. Yeah, and <laughs> and uh, I I see you work a lot of type design and also you customize logo type, and I'm I'm curious what do you think the difference between customize the logo type for a brand and uh, uh, to designing a phone a typeface? What do you think uh, the difference between the design thinking or the methodology? Do they have difference behind, yeah. Well, first of all, uh, it's time. I mean, you spend <laughs> uh, quite a few <laughs> months doing a typeface. Um, no, but but the main thing is that with a logo, you know the sequence of letters exactly. Yeah, it's like the same with with lettering. You know exactly what letter follows the next, so you can adapt that uh, combination of letters. With a typeface, you don't. You, you create a system that will work um, in any kind of combination of, of letters. And like I was saying, um, with, with a logo type, it's not quite often you just need to adapt, even if it's just the spacing or if it's a bit of um, the weight or, you know, or some little detail to make it into a recognizable logo. I'm not sure, was that a question or was, no? You, you look you look like, hmm, what is she talking more about? More or less, <laughs> yeah. I was thinking is a, uh, how to say, because uh, when we design a typeface, we want to create a system and uh, maybe sometimes we try to follow the rules a bit more than really breaking the rules, but maybe in logo type you, try to sure, break the rules more, so is there any... Yeah, yeah. sure, in a, but, but that relates to it, what I said, yeah, because in a logo type, of course, you can break any kind of rules you want, pretty much, if it fits, if it fits the brand, if it's appropriate. <laughs> but in a typeface, especially in a text face, you, you will have a hard time making that work, yeah? I mean, um, you have to think in with type, uh, you have to think about Repetition, yeah, because you have a high rate of repetition, and let's say you make some crazy A, um, I don't know, some weird serif sh um, shaped serif or so. Might look great as one A, <laughs> but then put it into text, and you will see, ooh, yeah, uh, it's popping up too much, and that that's a difference. Um, perhaps also in, in approach and the thinking, and uh, a logotype is just much faster. Uh, and, sorry, 
um, with, with a typeface, you don't, even if you think you have a brief, you believe you've designed it for something particular, uh, you will be surprised how people actually use it. Yeah. Uh, and how def how they deform it, and how <laughs> they just use it in very different contexts. With the logo, that won't really happen. Yeah, you have that more under control. Okay, was that more? Yeah, yeah. thank you. <laughs> yes, question? Thank you, Veronica, for this uh, presentation. Um, I must say that I'm impressed how you are able to address some uh, some market on speci specialties like multiscript typeface, uh, serif uh, screen typefaces, screen f uh, a typeface for children, typeface for business software, <laughs> and, uh, with a, a non-physical organization. So my <laughs> question is, how you do you keep it together? Because <laughs> and um, and, my, and my second point is. Uh, to my knowledge, from what I saw in the foundry, it's the most uh, your your in news section is the best documented I've seen so so far. Not, sorry, the, oh. the way you document the in news ah. section oh is right, for right. me is uh, the best uh, I, I've seen. So uh, how do you make it? Do you have a s a special uh, people on that? Um, yes, well, sort of. I mean, with the type in news, we were actually from the very beginning really really keen on keeping that or kind of expanding that because um, it was clear to me that people who are going to use type, they will want to see um, application. They, they will have a better understanding of how the typeface can work Yeah, if they see it. And even if it's not exactly the same what they need, but at least they will see how it works, you know. Um, we have for now the last four years, yeah, we had uh, Elena Vegias, who uh, is our kind of communication person. And she's keeping um, track of various type of news. Sometimes we get um, submissions, or she really looks around and tries to find places that have been used. She then contacts the people. So we really like doing that, yeah. I mean, uh, sometimes it's hard for, well, for new fonts, it's really hard to get Results, but with time, we try to do that. And then your other question was uh, about and the, the first part is that how do you keep, you it, keep together? it together? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we it was just me and Jose um, for a long time, and actually the first two years we did not see each other. It was uh, me at that time. I was in Boulder in the U.S. and he was in Argentina. Um, but I think with Jose, what happened is that we managed to develop. Um, a kind of a symbiotic relationship, yeah? And um, so we, we kind of know how we think um, each other and um, we kind of, can we, we can swap ideas and we can swap our work and I, I totally trust him, he trusts me. So I think one of the main issues also what you were saying with the clients, um, is trust, yeah. I, 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 from the start, I always was very keen on focusing on trust, and um, that's why perhaps we keep it together as well in a way. And with our other guys, I mean, perhaps that's a question for Roxanne. I don't know. She's here somewhere. She works for us, so she might have some input on, <laughs> on uh, how her experience is with it. But um, sure, there it's not everything perfect, and we are trying to improve things, but. Um, we we speak ev every day, pretty much. <laughs> Any question? I have a question for you. It's about uh, education, the incentive program. Could you say a few words about that? We have two people. Sure. One, or oh, who been selected? I don't know the words. Actually, yeah, two of yes. them are here. Uh, who yes, who you are? Sure. <laughs> yes. So, so it's two people here. Could you? There's Roxanne and there's Quentin. three. No, three people. No, 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 two. Two people. Two. Incentive program, okay? So Could you explain a little yeah, bit? Sure. Could you perhaps um, you can discuss to explain together? <laughs> Come here and say, oh, it works. Okay. Um, a few years back, we thought because w mm, both Jose and me we were involved in student work, kind of workshops, uh, teaching, and uh, we thought, okay, perhaps 
it's time to support current students and we will have the opportunity to work with them on their projects and have a bit more of an influence over that project where it's going rather than receiving submissions at the very end um, of their kind of studies. So we started this typeface incentive program uh, I think three or four years ago, four years ago. And uh, we got quite a few submissions from various um, schools and, and uh, well, Goxen uh, with Belly, you have it in your thing, um, one, let's say. And uh, we give uh, two and a half thousand um, as a kind of starting money for them to support, perhaps to buy some software or to keep them a month or two alive uh, so they can uh, continue actually working on the typeface because what happens quite often is that the students, they're all enthusiastic and uh, and then life happens. So you need to eat, you need to have a roof over your head um, and you start to work somewhere, of course. And then kind of your, your typeface sort of, you know, kind of slowly goes. <laughs> down the drawer and even further <laughs> down. Um, so this incentive was really meant to help with that. Sure, I mean, we can't afford, you know, to do this for years and years uh, for that particular person every month. But um, also we give them uh, a contract with Tap Together, a release contract, and we give a lot of feedback. With Roxanne, we worked a lot uh, and I think she learned quite a lot um, during the process. Um, but it's not that we decide what's gonna happen with this typeface, we give direction. But ultimately, it's the designer's decision. Yeah? So we try not to be, you know, the kind of boss from the top. And we had one this year, um, uh, some Bojidag uh, from Catalonia one. I hope that Quentin, you know, he's uh, a bit late. <laughs> so that happens as well. Uh, but we have you scheduled for the end of the year. And uh, yeah, next year we'll, um, it's usually in uh, February that we accept uh, submissions. So, you know, feel free. <laughs> Any more question? Yes, yep. it's over. So, um, so we have to say goodbye to the rest of the okay. world okay. watching <laughs> us. Could you do that, Mathieu? Yes. Goodbye, rest of the world. <laughs> Thank you, Veronica.